Hello there, this is the Bookkeeper Master on YouTube. Welcome to another Sage video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the recurring items feature on Sage 50 Cloud and Sage 50 Accounts. You access recurring items by going to the Bank Accounts module here. So click on Bank Accounts in the, this uh, left hand sidebar and go to recurring items, which is an icon at the top of this page. If it's not showing, you might need to right click and tick on recurring items because it could be hidden. What is the feature for? So transactions that appear frequently in the accounts can be set up as a recurring item. It's there to save you time. If you have a monthly retainer, purely as an example, with an accountant, some sort of consultant, let's say it's 200 pounds or 200 euros dollars every month, you can set that up as a recurring item so sage will automatically post that 200 pound expense supplier payment every month so you don't have to record it manually each month another common recurring item is like insurance if you have a direct debit going out for insurance every month you can set that up as a recurring item to save you the time creating that transaction manually there could be lots of different recurring items. Sometimes it's wages. Usually it is things like standing orders though and direct debits. Okay, if we click on recurring items, we will have our list of recurring items set up on Sage appear. The list is blank because nothing has been added yet. So if I click on add, then we can add a recurring item. Now at the top here, we have the bank account and the nominal code. Even though that's at the top of this box, it's not the first thing you want to do. The first thing you want to do is identify what the transaction type is, because depending on what you select here, will depend on what boxes show at the top of this um, add slash edit recurring entry box. So in here, we have bank, cash, credit card, payments, receipts. These are bank payments, bank receipts, we have bank transfers. We have customer payments on accounts, we have journals, and at the bottom we have supplier payments on account. So things like insurance would usually be put through as a bank payment, unless you've added the insurance schedule as an invoice. If that's the case, it would be a supplier payment. I don't really want to go into detail into which transaction type you should use. You should know this. This is covered in other videos. You know, if you don't know these things, you might want to check out my other Sage videos, such as my Sage my free Sage courses. So if we have, say, a monthly retainer with an accountant, it could be that that's going to be a supplier payment on account, or it could be a bank payment. If we have a monthly or weekly transfer from the bank account to a savings account, that's going to be a bank transfer. So it's important that you do know your transaction types. If you have any questions about these things, feel free to use the comment section below. So let's say in this example, let's do our, our first one. So let's say we're going to do a monthly direct debit, a monthly transfer from our bank current account to our building society account. Let's say the company has set up say a 500 pound direct debit. So every month 500 pound is transferred from the current account to the the building society account. Perhaps this is some sort of savings account. So to save us clicking on bank transfer every month and recording that transfer, that transaction manually, we can set up a recurring item just once. So bank transfer from account, current account to the building society account. There we go. And then we can fill in the details here. So we have our transfer with the reference, direct debit slash standing order. We can change that if we like with the transaction details, bank transfer. You can change that if you like the department. Once again, you can change that if you like down here is probably the most important bit is the post and frequency. So this is going to be every one month. We can choose day, weeks or months. And let's say it's going to start tomorrow, the 23rd. So every 23rd of the month, Sage is going to create a transaction of 
500 pounds, 500 dollars, euros from the bank current account to the building society account. Now, if there is a number of postings required, let's say this standing order has been set up for just 12 months, the next 12 months we can put 12 in here. So it will post 12 transactions, one a month over the next 12 months. The recurring item will then end. If we leave this as zero, then it will just keep posting every month until we tell it not to. And when we are ready to tell Sage not to post anymore, we can just click on this suspend posting here. So let's leave this as zero, click OK. We now have our bank transfer from one account to the other. Every one month for 500 pounds shows you when the next posting will be, which is the 23rd of March, and how many postings have been made. There are other things you can show too by right clicking on the column. If we want to see the net amount, say, the VAT, if there was VAT, we can show that too. But let's get rid of them. Let's set up another recurring item. Let's say this is going to be a bank payment this time from the bank account to some sort of consultancy. Well, let's do, let's have a look through consultancy fees 7602. So the bank payment. Let's change this to retain direct debit, transaction details, retainer with BD consultancy. Let's say this is a weekly retainer. So every one week, we're going to transfer 50 pounds or let's do 45 from the bank account to this consultant. If we have this consultant set up as a supplier, then you wouldn't do a bank payment, but a supplier payment. Okay, so let's just do this quickly. 7602. Okay, we can fill this in. Every one week starting tomorrow. Okay, we can click OK. We now have that recurring item set up. Now, even though we've set these up, they're not going to post to Sage until we click Process. And the way this process feature works is you need to put the date in that you want to Sage to post up to. So let's say we want to post everything to the 30th of the 4th, so just over a month's time. It will bring up all the transactions that have been entered as recurring items that fall in to this date. That's from today's date to the 30th of the 4th. You can see we had our bank transfers. We have two of them, one on the 23rd of March, one on the 23rd of April, and we have our weekly retainer to BD Consultancy. If I click Post, they've all been posted automatically and are now on Sage. So you can see we've had six postings of this retainer and two of the, the bank transfer here to the savings account. If we go to the activity of this bank current account, and let's look at our most recent transactions. Here we go, we have our retainers going through, our bank transfers going through. If you have a number of recurring items, especially if they're very frequently, such as every week, by clicking process, once they've been set up, by clicking process and then the change in the date and clicking OK, you can potentially post tens if not hundreds of transactions in one go which is a lot quicker than entering them manually. When you're ready to suspend postings, if we go back to recurring items, you can click on the recurring item, click edit, click suspend posting. Alternatively, you can highlight and click delete. Under edit, we can edit any of the details here. So let's say the amount has now changed this retainer to 54 pounds every week. We can just do that, click OK and it'll update it for us going forward. Hopefully this helps. This is just the basics of recurring items. Hopefully it's been insightful. Please like, please subscribe. I have many more videos you can watch. Just check them out. 
on my YouTube channel.